Welcome to this episode of Facilitation Fridays. I'm Kalani, your host and teacher, and this is World Drum Club, so thanks for tuning in. So I'm going to be talking about facilitation, and today we're going to talk about the difference between conducting and facilitating. And I'm going to reference, again, the Way of Music book. And on page 137, I talk about group drumming and conducting. This would apply to any kind of music making. And those of you that have been watching this series by now realize that um, these principles apply to anything outside of music as well, like facilitating a conversation or facilitating a process. So if you're a coach or a facilitator or a therapist of some kind, you can certainly apply these principles. I'm going to be talking about them within the context of group drumming, but these are universal principles. So I, I point out some things in the book about conducting versus facilitating, and I want to make a point to get back to the definitions of conducting versus facilitating so we can examine our presuppositions uh, about what those things mean and what we're doing uh, when we enact certain strategies and techniques and, and uh, actions uh, with regard to a group of people with whom we are working and trying to help. So basically, uh, what's been happening anyway in the group drumming community, and specifically more in the drum circle facil facilitation community, is that the word uh, facilitating or facilitation has been used in place of or as a substitute for conducting, not intentionally. But I'll give you an example. So I was giving a training in another country, and a woman asked, uh, can I get up and facilitate, right? And they had asked to do a drum circle. I usually, I really don't do that many drum circles anymore because to me, what, what people are more interested in is just learning music and playing music, uh, learning ensembles and things like that. Uh, but, you know, in as much as a drum circle is improvised, then we can certainly do drumming improvisation. So this woman asked me if she could facilitate, and I said, sure, you know, go ahead. And there's about 30 people in the group. And she immediately went to the center, got everyone's attention, and started to have some people stop and other people go. And then some people were to echo her and repeat. And it was a, it was just pure conducting. And there's two issues with that. One is that's not a drum circle. A drum circle is a collective creation, right? By everybody who's who's there, who's in the circle. But more importantly, it's just telling people what to do. I mean, if, if you're conducting people, and I don't mean like an orchestra conductor who works with an orchestra over a period of time and shapes the performance and there's, there's more of an understanding there about the dynamic. But if you're just getting up in front of people and waving your arms around and getting people to, to stop playing or to play in a specific way or to repeat certain things, that is not music improvisation. That is very, very controlling. And I, in the book, in this book, I make it a point to, to say that there's a difference between people that are behaving as if they are unified or they are behaving as if they're listening to each other and they're playing together, All right? Let's say everybody's playing together, everybody's playing to the same beat or they're playing the same rhythm, they're doing the same thing, kind of like if they're chanting, if, if a group of people were walking in lockstep or they're ch doing the same chant, that's a behavior, right? That's, a, that's an outcome. And you could say, well, look at these people. They're so unified. Isn't that wonderful that they're all cooperating and they've come together and they're unified? Um, I take issue with that because just because people are doing the same thing at the same time doesn't mean they're even connected to each other. What was happening in that case, and I would argue what's happening in a lot of cases where people use what we call a behavioral approach is that people were just following instructions and people were following the commands and the instructions of the leader uh, and therefore they were behaving in, in a unified way. They probably weren't 
paying it that much attention to what other people were doing in the group and listening to what they were doing and then responding in a way that they chose to respond. Does that make sense? Right? So there's a difference between people that are just behaving as if they're unified and people that are actually unified because they're listening to each other and they're moving in a, in a unified direction, but they're doing it in a collective, a collectively, <laughs> not to, uh, I will borrow a phrase from Carl Jung, but in a collectively conscious way, right? So the facilitator, I use that and I'll put air quotes around facilitator in that case, was really, were they really facilitating? And that's the question. Um, were they actually facilitating a creative process uh, that involved the impulses and the desires and the ideas of the participants? Or, and I bet you, you will know what I think about that, or were they just commanding people to do things and then therefore eliciting this very specific kind of behavior? And I, I, I would say it's the latter. But if you ask them, what are you doing? They would say, oh, I'm facilitating this group. So I think we need to step back as facilitators, as whether it's wind music or another discipline or another genre, um, and ask ourselves, what are we really doing to facilitate the process? Or are we just controlling everyone? Are we commanding people to stand up, to raise their arms, to shout certain things? You know, that might feel good. That might feel un like unity. But is it? Um, or is that just totalitarianism? <laughs> is it facilitation? Okay, so uh, part of the issues that, that could come up, part of the uh, detriments, some of the detriments of the issues um, that can come up with, with conducting uh, in place of facilitation are... Um, a really uh, a diminishment of the intermusical and intramusical uh, experiences of the participants. In other words, people stop listening to each other. They may stop doing what they want to do, right? That's the in, intramusical experience where I'm playing what I want to play. Well, if I have to follow somebody else's commands, maybe I can't do that anymore. Now I have to do what they want me to do. Similarly, I might be having an intermusical experience or a dialogue, you know, with members. I'm, I'm listening to people, but now I have to stop doing that and I have to start paying attention to this person standing in front of me, making me do things, right? Play softer, play louder, play like this, repeat after me, doing all those things. So now my attention is, is not on the other members of my group. It's on this one person. So there's a, and there's a very specific relationship with that person called leader follower at that point. Um, there's also this dynamic that gets created when the quote facilitator, in this case, I'll use the group drumming example, stands up, gets into the middle and does some conducting and then stops the conducting, but everybody's still waiting for them to do the next thing. Like they don't want to miss the next command or the next cue, right? So now their attention is still on that person even though they're not doing anything. So there's that, that issue. Um, as I mentioned a moment ago, you're promoting a leader-follower relationship. If you say you're gonna facilitate somebody's process, that means you're putting yourself in service to an individual or in service to a group. But the more you conduct, the more you're commanding people to do things, the more you're creating the opposite relationship of that. You're making people work for you instead of you working for them. So it's kind of this issue of ownership, right? Whose circle is it? Whose company is it? Whose ideas are most important? What's your role? Uh, you can also end up increasing people's anxiety levels because they're trying to guess what the leader is doing. Like, what does he or she want me to do? I'm not really sure what that was. 
Uh, what did that mean? What is it? What are we doing now? I don't know. You know, I'm like, it's like a puzzle because often conducting is nonverbal. Sometimes it, incu it, it includes verbal cues or verbalizations or vocalizations, but often people don't necessarily know what the leader or the conductor wants. So there's this deciphering that has to happen. That's another thing that can be kind of stressful. Why? And why does that even exist? Why does that, why do I have to figure out what somebody wants me to do, especially if it's supposed to be a drum circle. I think that's the kind of thing people get want to get away from when they go play in a drum circle. And you don't want to actually create more of that, like like you're their boss or something, right? It's like, that's why I came to the drum circle, so I could do what I want and play. Um, and related to that, you can end up with an actual decrease in what we would say autonomy or self-determination, right? People are there to improvise music. They're there to play something that's coming from them so they can personalize it. They can individualize the experience. Um, they can have the freedom to express themselves in the way that they want, that feels right for them. And when we're conducting, we're controlling, we're taking away that freedom, right? And uh, that's no fun <laughs> for a lot of people. Uh, so you might find that people become disinterested or they just, they feel overly controlled um, in that case. And um, we, we can also end up with losing out uh, on potentiality because if the leader, conductor or facilitator, however you want to call it, uh, is dictating, all right, they're, they're kind of commanding because conducting is controlling and conducting is commanding. It's not a it's not a, do you, would you like to do this? It's like, if I say stop, that means everybody stop, right? Everyone. Uh, so as that happens, you end up, you can end up with people just feeling like they have no say in the matter, right? That they're, that they're and then that implies also that, they're, that their ideas are not valid or they're not as good or they're not worth hearing. And so the way, you know, the way I teach is to, first of all, stay in the music. So, so don't separate yourself as a facilitator from everyone else. The best facilitation happens when nobody even notices it's happening. And that's why I like to teach facilitation through the music and use a lot of techniques. And that's what this whole book is about, the way of music. It's about uh, using your music to facilitate the music of others, not using your arms and your body and in you know visual cues and verbal cues, not telling people what to do and not using a modality that's different from their modality. In other words, if I'm the only one that gets to get up and do signals and say things, I'm really different than everyone else. That's kind of strange, right? So what I, what I prefer to do is join with the group, play music, as part of the group, as a member of the group, and then just influence the music through the music that I play. For example, instead of getting up and clapping my hands and trying to speed everybody up and, and play in a way that, that makes everybody speed up and conduct people to speed up, I can just play a little bit faster myself. And if I have an instrument that is a influential voice in the ensemble, like something that stands out or something that has a certain amount of body to it, like a bass drum or a bell or a sound that's different um, than most other people's sounds, I can influence the group from within the group. I can gently push the tempo forward or, or higher or faster. Uh, same with the volume. Uh, I can introduce different, different rhythms. I can introduce different ways of playing. I can um, add energy. I can remove energy. I can do a lot of things through the way I play. And what that does is that maintains everyone's sense of autonomy. It does not draw everyone's attention away from themselves and each other to me. It does not create a leader follower relationship. Uh, it still validates everyone's own, everyone's ideas. And in fact, there are techniques that I teach in the courses that I, that I present called developmental community music where we actually look at ways to bring out other people's voices even more. 
So kind of doing the opposite of the conducting um, style, we look at ways of, for example, um, synchronizing or, or playing exactly what somebody else is playing, synchronizing with somebody, playing what they're playing as a way to make their voice louder and make what they're doing even more influential. It's kind of like if somebody, if you were talking, if you're in a meeting with people and somebody said something, then it would be like repeating that in a way and reiterating that, rewording what somebody says to give it more body, right? Instead of ignoring what somebody says and just kind of glossing over it or, you know, bullying your way to an outcome that you want. All right. Uh, I hope these all make sense to you. If you've been listening this whole time, thank you and congratulations. <laughs> I'd like to know what you think about this. Is is conducting the same as facilitating? Um, a little bit of conducting goes a long way. So when is it too much? Uh, have you been a participant in a, in a, let's say, a drum circle or some sort of music circle where somebody has done a lot of conducting? And how did how did you feel when that was happening? Uh, what's your solution? Uh, are you a facilitator that uses conducting? And how do you feel when you're doing that? Do you ever feel like you're kind of out of place uh, or not the same as everyone else in the group? Or do you enjoy that? Do you like the power, the feeling uh, of awesome power of leadership over a large group of people? And, you know, and I get that too. I've been there. I've definitely been that guy uh, bouncing around the middle of a big circle. And I think that's wonderful for a minute, especially for kids, you know, getting kids, giving children a chance or anybody, giving people a chance to be a leader and be a conductor and kind of have that, that, uh, you know, in Fantasia when Mickey Mouse was on the mountaintop, I think they were playing Night on Bald Mountain and he's conducting and he's controlling the oceans and the skies and the lightning and the thunder and he's every, you know, everything. Um, it can be a cool feeling, but you know what? We all know how that ended up. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you like this, um, then like it. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm Kalani. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.